the information that I now have the opportunity to give, the, like the information, mm-hmm. if nothing else, the information, if you really want to have impact, and you want to try to position yourself to help create the opportunities for change, uh, financial literacy in the black community, not understanding banking, haven't known it, my alignment with Chase and 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 well, J.P. Morgan, my but my why, that there's a why attached to it. Okay, I'm, I'm. This is a reason. I got I got something bigger mm-hmm. than my fame and success. I okay. This is a passion. Yes. And something that we're trying to correct. Okay. In the space of inspiration, motivation, there's a passion attached to me trying to simply inspire and motivate those that just simply aren't getting motivating messages on a day-to-day because some households just don't do it. Some may not have the households that do it. I didn't grow up in a mom and dad, the dinner every night, the uh, family prayer at the table. I didn't have that. That's not my life. There's other people that do have it. There's some people that just them and their mom, them and their dad. Some people don't have anybody. Whatever that thing is, you don't know who's pulling from what to try to get to where. Like you, we have no idea. So if I can now act as a aid that is giving you nothing but verbal warfare attached to truth and authenticity. If I'm giving you anecdotes and gems that are attached to a real life concept like this isn't it's not made up i'm giving you simple information based off of me and my battles i just told you there's no handbook for fame i don't want to get to that point so i do it all the time you're still going you're still working but i promise you there's a person that will listen to this that will understand it and that will go you know what man you shouldn't be afraid to be who you are If I can embody and embed the space of confidence for others to make people understand how dope it is to simply believe that you can do whatever you put your mind to. If I can help and just give you that push, I did my part. Mm. Self-confidence and belief. That's how dreams get met. Self-confidence and belief. That's how you check off goals. That's how you march towards whatever your versions of success are. You know, when you say and, and, and use the... The word monsters, just for, for clarity, so people can understand, of course, we're talking about um, the the different levels to you, right? And um, within the levels that I've discovered in myself, uh, of myself, you know, you got your good versions and your bad versions. And the bad versions I refer to as monsters, but just because they're bad doesn't mean they don't have good quality. And when you're winning and you're succeeding, there's this idea that everything is right. There's this idea that perfection is now presenting itself and life moving forward is going to be just an easy road. Um, And it's not until you're in that position where you expect perfection and you think that, that you start to see the true problems and flaws really present themselves. And, you know, my monsters have been um, masked and disguised in in various different ways, but I've been able to to pinpoint them throughout the years um, because some of those monsters uh, grew, got stronger, um, developed. You, you're talking about the world of an ego, the 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 idea of of who you think you are versus what you are, or um, the idea of expectations and needs as to what you feel you need and what you have to have. That's a that's a monster that's feeding that right that that engine of well now that I'm making money this is what I should have this is how I should look this is how I'm supposed to be that's a monster that you're feeding because ultimately you're buying in to something that you're creating you're you're enhancing this world of thought and it's not till you sit down and you take a breather and you start to really kind of you start to really figure out the true definition of happiness for you. You start to really understand uh, the adult that you have grown into and the level of maturity that has now, I guess you can say, have been banked inside the, 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 the human that you are. It's, you're banking so much over the years and ultimately you're, you're shaping and molding yourself into this, this grounded, hopefully, this grounded individual that you're proud to look at in the mirror at the end of the day. You know, me and my dad, we we weren't the closest, um, 
but we weren't not close. My dad, I, at the end of the day, I want to love my dad for simply being my dad. Now my dad's life, you know, had several different versions of, of drastic downs, right? A small amount of ups, but a lot of downs. I can easily sit here and ridicule or judge my dad for the mistakes that he made or for his past, but that does nothing. It, I don't I don't like to focus on problem, I focus on solution. Yes. So with me and my dad in our relationship, it was always one of solution. Like you can't go back and fix the years that you weren't present. There's there is nothing that we can do about that time. We can have a conversation about it. We can talk about it. And then me and my dad talking, my biggest thing was you don't have to focus on what you can't change. The fact that you're here now and that you made a decision to uh, get clean, to turn your life around. It's never too late. My dad was, you know, 50 plus at the time when he said, I'm gonna go ahead and figure it out. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna close that door and I'm gonna work on this other door. This door over here was, like I said, jail, drugs, um, in and out of his kid's life uh, to the point where, you know, there was a there was a time when we didn't know where my dad was. And I, I bumped into my dad on a train. I tell a story. Um, bumped into my dad on a public transportation in Philadelphia. Like, not seeing him in years, I randomly saw my dad. And my dad was so embarrassed, he got off the train and ran. But it's like, that's, that's where wow. that world and that relationship was. And what I do very well, I don't hold on to grudges or gripes. It takes too much time. It takes too much energy. Things will work themselves out. They never not have. It'll always work itself out. I mean, my dad worked it out, right? Like, it's about the grandkids. And our relationship got better as he embraced the opportunity to be a great grandpa. And seeing him try to do that right was his way of saying, I wish I could have done this right for you. I can't. Like, I know what you're saying without saying it. Sometimes you don't, you don't need words. Although some people do need them. Sometimes your actions are a little better. And my dad's actions um, in trying his best to be an unbelievable grandfather made our father-son relationship that much better. And, you know, there was a lot of conflict between my brother and my dad. And seeing that mend over the time. And just saying, look, I'm, I'm not supposed to be here. Dad, look at what your son has done. Look at where I am. Being that I can, I want to make sure that you get to see some dope things in life. Here, let's do this and take that and live like this and do. So things work themselves out. His reward for giving his energy to something positive and life-changing was his son becoming successful and his son saying, Dad, huh? It's not expected. That wasn't the plan. You got to great piece of light at the end of that dark tunnel that you didn't expect that I didn't expect because I didn't expect to be here so everything kind of it works itself out yeah and you know and losing my dad is when you look back and you go yo he was all right right like my my reflection my conversation my words when I speak on behalf of my father they're so positive and dope because he did good I'm all right mm -hmm. I came out okay Mom, dad, you did good. <laughs> yeah. Like how whatever whatever you did to to put whatever recipe in this pot, the food came out all right. I'm a good person. I got a good heart. I treat people with respect. Ultimately, I want the most that I can possibly get out of life. I love to love. I'm a good dude. Am I perfect? No. I got some of them imperfections over there. I got some of the ones from over here from my man dad. Okay. That's life. Of course. I'm going to figure it out, but I, I figure it out without the want or need for problem. 